Hi and welcome to this week's video. Uh, we get a little bit done, not as much as I'd like to, but we get the control column finished and I discover I've made a mistake. But we can always fix it, but that's for the future. So let's get cracking. Okay, it's confession time. I made a mistake. I put in a cross member here. Ah, yes. It sits on the bottom of the fuselage, but not at the top. I saw that there and just assumed that a bit had been messed out. When you look down here, you can see that there's a piece there. And there isn't a piece. The piece is above the uh, longerons. So, uh, how does that affect life? Well, for the standard engine mount set up for the VW, there's a plate that goes in behind the firewall and a plate that goes in front of the firewall. And uh, I'm not sure quite how my addition is going to uh, be a, an issue. Let's have a look at the front end. So this piece should be here, this piece shouldn't be. And there should be a piece of 3 8 plywood stuck on the back of here that goes up into the top just above this piece by about a quarter inch or so. Uh, which the uh, engine, four engine mounting bolts go through. That's for a standard VW engine mounting system. Mine's not quite going to be a standard VW engine mounting system, but uh, there's no cross member. There's no cross member lower down. There's just a square of, of plywood that sort of goes in here, uh, and then on the front, there's a chunk of ply that goes around here. It's quite a, a wacky shape. It's not supplied in the kit. Neither bit supplied in the kit. So uh, I'll have to purchase it anyway. Now looking at um, this, what options I could do if I do need to have that ply doubler is I could cut this back to say a quarter of an inch uh, with, a quarter, with the original shape bit made up out of a quarter of an inch and then uh, make sure this is dead flat with, with that and then put an eighth inch piece over uh, acting like a gusset onto there and that would actually make things a lot stronger because I'd have a piece out here still supporting onto the, uh, the sides of the aircraft now whether that would actually interfere with the strut mounts is another matter I could end up having to cut that piece out completely. But we'll come to that issue when we come to it. So moral of the story is read the plans, look at the plans, look at all the sheets of the plans and then build. Hey ho! So just to prove we do have the good, the bad and occasionally the ugly. I think it's an easy enough issue to sort out and we can tidy things up a bit if we need to. So uh, this is one end of the uh, control column uh, torque tube for the bearing uh, fit. There's a bearing. That bearing is, is not fully seating because the hole is slightly it's got a slight start taper to it to make that an interference fit so that's been uh, brought down to give the bearing enough room to sit flush there's a hole in there that's nine millimeters so should the bearing fail the eight millimeter uh, pin you know it will this won't just flap around in the breeze. Uh, this side, this has been bored out so that we've got a 1.5 millimeter thick wall uh, to remove weight for starters and also to allow me to put in uh, 
three rivets to hold this into the uh, torque tube so it can't move so this will be bonded T88 bonding and then drilled three rivets going around uh, pulled blind rivets going around uh, with sufficient edge distance that way and clearance from the uh, the end of the drilling there so that the rivets will fully form and that weighs three grams more than the sleeve going on the outside of the uh, the original tube so but the bearing adds a lot more weight than that well uh, adds, adds a significant amount but the whole this whole modification front to rear uh, is not adding a huge amount to the uh, the overall weight of the system so uh, but it will add an awful lot to the longevity and the strength at that uh, cross member so another one of these things to make up slightly different profile for the uh, the front bearing pin so uh, that's the other end cap I've, I've actually got it bonded in now but that's the front one with a slightly different profile to the one which I showed you before bearings are pressed in they're in bonded they'll have uh, three rivets holding each one this is the aileron bell crank and I had to reverse uh, engineer the uh, dimension from the spar carry through the main spar carry through the dimension on the plan sort of shows 10 inches and it shows the distance from that end but that end would be going through things so I worked it back so we've got two and a half inches and six and a quarter inches I think it is um, back from the uh, that carry through so I've marked those positions that's just a, 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 a rivet line there's a inside here there's a um, piece of uh, aluminium uh, drilled through uh, so I can rivet it here to a doubler but just to make it a bit thicker because I'm going to be putting in uh, bronze bearing bushes for the control column so what I'm going to do now is as I've got the, the positions marked that's going to be uh, drilled and reamed for a quarter inch bolt to go through there and this will be drilled for the uh, control column all jigged up on the pillar drill uh, and then uh, drilled out to take my bushings a little flat milled on the surface of this tube uh, about uh, three quarters of the thickness of this tube hence the required for the bushing uh, the yeah, insert sleeve rather and then the bushing is set into that uh, and reamed to take a pin I'll show you the bits when I'm ready uh, to put it together so here we have the basic assembly uh, that's been reamed through uh, to accept the uh, AN415A uh, bolt uh, this nut will have a washer and it will be a uh, nylock nut the rivets are around here helping to secure the end bearing cap in even though it's bonded uh, there's a bush there on both sides and we have the pivot pin this will be clamped between the two arms of the uh, control column and there'll be thin stainless steel washers uh, at each end so that uh, when that's bolted it'll be the whole thing will be rotating uh, with the joystick itself and that uh, stainless steel thin uh, washer shimming washer will uh, ride on the bush so that uh, none of this is wearing into the aluminium on the arm and then we've got the uh, the rivets holding in uh, the end here as well so that's all all sorted I've just got to clean up uh, the marks off here and I'll take the bowls out mask up uh, the bearings and that and I'll uh, get this primed and uh, we'll get the uh, the lower joystick section primed as well and that'll be ready to uh, to sort of fit into the aircraft still got to make up the distance piece here for when it's fitted but that's for another night okay the situation at the moment I've got the tail post here uh, glued up and made sure it's square with 
bungee just making sure it's held over there I've got diagonals and bits made up for the other stations further forward but not bonded in here we are at station 6 with the uh, cross pieces bonded in the diagonal across the bottom here gussets in on the corners and the diagonal that goes there we go, diagonal that goes across here uh, all bonded in uh, the control column is in place uh, it's not tightened uh, down or anything like that it's just in so it's, uh, it's there all ready to go with the spacer tube for the front section uh, made up which can be shimmed to take up any uh, four to half play um, but the main reason for putting it in uh, here is so I can actually draw across to the sides here to mark up where the hole will need to be in the floor here uh, for this to protrude through so I can mark that up I can take the uh, control column out now I've got all the bits fabricated so while it was easy to get access to and uh, we're then ready really to uh, stick the outer floor in well that's the end of another week uh, found I've done a mistake uh, got a few bits and pieces done not quite got as far as I'd like to had visitors and various other bits and pieces to contend with but hey ho we've got a chunk there I think next week we'll finish off the diagonals and cross pieces for the rear end of the fuselage get the gussets in and cut oh, a huge number of little blocks to go into the corners where they're required so Catch me next week. Bye now, look after yourselves. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.